Okay, my name is Ben Paul, I'm with OPST, and I'm going to tie one of my favorite patterns today, it's a micro intruder, um, it's a really good trout fly, uh, I believe that there is something about the intruder that, you know, whether it's steelhead or trout, um, it just elicits uh, aggression in fish, and I've had really good luck on this uh, with trout, both in freshwater and saltwater in Puget Sound, especially in saltwater actually, um, also make a really good bass fly, and primarily you know, number one is kind of, I'm just tying it for fun. You know, I just like the intruder and I like tying small ones. I think it's kind of satisfying. And they swim really nicely too, so let's get started. So oftentimes I'll use 6 aught Vivas thread when doing this. You can totally get away with that. It's a little bit uh, sketchy on the composite loop though, so to avoid, you know, risking breaking my thread, I'm going to use 140 denier, which is kind of standard for for small to medium sized intruders. Secure our thread. Actually, I'm just going to go and put the eyes on right away. These are small or extra small lead dumbbell eyes. We'll specify that later, but pretty good size eyes for this size fly. This, this is tied on a size 10 streamer hook, and a lot of times, you know, I, I'll fish these on a it's not really cooperating. I'll fish these on a five foot OPSC micro tip and in, in deeper, you know, faster water, it's nice to have the fly sink on its own as well. Pretty good size eyes on this guy. And then we're gonna go back to the butt. And for the butt, I'm gonna tie in some fine uh, chenille, Flarsen chenille shell pink. I really like the color shell pink. I think it catches fish everywhere. I'm going to strip off a little bit of the fiber so that I can tie it on more precisely. And this, I think this egg just elicits a, a response in all salmonids, salmonids, however you want to say it. And this will also serve as a little prop for the ostrich that I'm going to tie on after this. Maybe three turns of that, and then I'm going to tie my ostrich in right up against it. So for the tails, twin tails of OPST barred ostrich, this is yellow green. Some might call it olive. I'm going to put three strands on either side. Even them out. Try to. Get them roughly even. And these things move so nice in the water. Not too long, not too short, maybe just an, just about an inch long. On one side, and then I'll do the same on the other side. Three strands. I'm going to just wrap over all the, the butts here so as to try to make an even body. And since I'm tying this on camera, I'll go the extra mile and I'm going to put a little woolly bugger body on this thing too. Um, so I'm going to use cannot mono thread for a rib. I'm going to tie this back and just let it kind of hang out for a while. This is going to secure the hackle later on. And 
for the body I'm going to use lateral scale. Black lateral scale. It's one of my favorite materials for bodies. And it's not really black per se. Um, it's, this is a really you know, versatile color. It goes with a lot of other colors. It's really good on dry flies too and nymphs. So tie that in and I'm just going to wrap forward. The cool thing about this is it's transparent so you can sort of change the look using different color thread underneath it. I'm just going to do some very tight wraps up forward. Get that mono thread out of the way if we can. There we go. Overlapping wraps kind of makes a cool ribbed effect by itself. Stop it. Give myself some room for the composite loop. Okay, now I'm going to turn the fly over how I how it'll actually look in real life. Now I'm going to put a, a hackle on here, just a, an olive grizzly hackle for the body, and I'm going to measure it out first to get the length I want, and I'm going to start there. So I'm going to start right about right about there, cut it off a little bit beyond that, and then strip off some of these fibers to give me a good place to tie it down. And don't skimp on the wraps for these. You want to make sure they're it's tied in. So I'm going to leave the butt a little bit long and just really wrap that. And I'm going to wrap this backwards and then the rib is going to come forwards and secure it. It's sort of one way of tying a woolly bugger. Sneak one of the last wrap in there. And we'll come forward and so you're not actually really tying off a feather. The rib is tying off the feather. Oh shit. Maybe I can still salvage that. No, you I could be using hackle pliers. I was gonna say. Could be using all the tools at my disposal here. That does a lot of use hacker pliers. He's mostly making composite loops here. Yeah, I don't I don't usually use these things. I've got two. Okay, so hackle pliers are made for exactly this type of situation. Start it a little farther forward, farther backwards. Good thing I made my rib pretty long. And you want to kind of wobble this thread to try to avoid trapping a whole bunch of materials. You want to trap the stem, but not the feather itself. All right, one more wrap for good measure. Hopefully that was the Last bit of drama for this fly because the hard parts are coming up. <clears throat> Get the hackle pliers out of there. Okay, cool. So now we're going to come down to our patented piece of paper with a line drawn down the middle. And I'm going to use my favorite material here, which is sculpin wool. Um, for tying these small intruders, this one's not that, well it's pretty small. I could probably get away with dubbing, but it's easier to get consistency if you use sculpin wool, because it all comes in even lengths. 
see that it comes out as a tube and I can cut it to whatever length I want and that really matters for a small fly like this so since it's gotten a little frayed I'm just going to make a cleaning cut and then I'm going to cut let me see about size of my fly uh, about a little maybe a little less than a half inch and then we have all nice even fibers so I'm going to spread these out along the black line and the black line <coughs> will be your thread in the dubbing loop so if I put lay the materials down 50-50 over the line that's how they'll be in the dubbing loop and I'm going to make this composite loop about a little over an inch long and this base layer forms the body but also forms kind of a, a one half of the sandwich one piece of the bread of the sandwich that the other materials are going to rest in on top of this I'm going to use some clear barred predator wrap <coughs> to start out and this is just to add some flash and sort of sort of some bugginess I guess um, it's a pretty popular material and I'm going to lay these fibers down 50-50 over the line and I can do that because they're not tapered with a natural material you have to account for the taper so you have to put the butts short on one side and the tips long on the other side but these you can just throw them on kind of willy-nilly which is why one reason why synthetics are much much easier to tie with so just a sort of a even medium layer of those then for a little contrast I'm going to put in some Lady Amherst now this is a natural material so I'm going to have to account for the butts and it's really important to brush these before you put them in because if fibers like to stick together and that can really make an ugly fly so I'm going to put in a good couple fingers worth of this a little bit longer than I want it because <clears throat> you need some butt some the butts to sort of not stick out so much but be present and this is maybe a little bit long but I think that's okay I think it's gonna look decent and just lay them down as evenly as you can the Amherst actually moves quite well you know people usually just put it in because it looks cool but it actually moves pretty well and I made these a little longer it might give me some movement so now I've got two materials in our loop looking pretty good looking decently even it's hard to get it perfect with these small loops now I'm going to add a little bit of accent ice dub oftentimes I'll use ice dub as the base layer here where I use sculpin wool but it, if you just kind of throw it on there it makes a cool effect as an accent this is UV dark olive to go with our olive theme. I'm just going to kind of lay it on there. And this kind of makes a little whispers too in the water. You can kind of see it moving around. <coughs> and then we're just going to cover it up with more sculpin wool. Nice thin layer. Pause. A really annoying feature of that camera. Well, it was at the cutting edge. Okay. So we'll just lay down more sculpin wool. Let's complete our sandwich here. Again, the black line is going to be the, th the thread. And then I'm going to make a dubbing loop a little bit longer than this so that it'll spin effectively So I'm going to make 
I'm going to make my dubbing loop just a little bit longer than the length of the materials I have there so that it'll spin effectively. Go around my loop twice to lock it in. And I'm going to bring my thread up to the front. And then just take this whole batch of materials after I wax the loop that is. <clears throat> take this whole batch of materials and put them in the loop. Open wide. Put them in the loop just as the black line represents the thread. And as long as, from this point on, I need to maintain tension down here. <clears throat> Otherwise they'll materials will move around, but if you maintain tension, maintain tension, you can get away with manipulating these things and cutting them. The butts suddenly look too long here, so I'm going to just cut them all. It's pretty nice to be able to do that. And then I'm going to spin it. <clears throat> I have 140 denier here, so I can really really wreath on this thing. A really good OPSC dubbing spinner helps. I'm just going to give it a bunch of, I don't know, I think that was four, three or four good spins and it should be good to go. Now I'm going to pick it out with my whip finisher to free some of these trap fibers. You really got to treat these loops before you tie them on, otherwise they're going to be too bulky. Now that we've picked it out, we're going to brush it out too. Okay, and now, even just as important, I'm going to apply some water. And you'll see how much body this sculpin wool has when it sort of just bounces back after I try to lay it flat. That's why another reason I like using it in these flies is it holds its own against the current. And now we have a hackle taking shape. We squeeze and wet this, make it as compact as possible so that we can wrap in the limited amount of space we have. It should get it real soaking wet. <clears throat> Start just in front of the hackle. <clears throat> We're going to finish up front. I'm going to finish this just behind the eyes. Pull on it as I cut. Should stay put. We're going to brush this out. This is the patented OPST toothbrush. The only thing that's carried nationwide. Okay, I'm liking what we're working with so far. So now comes the the really hard part. That was the hard part, and this is the really hard part. I have anxiety every time I use saddle hackles, especially on camera, because they have a life of their own, and it could kind of ruin your day. And I've chosen two pale orange here of equal size from the opposite side of the bird and I'm gonna measure them out here just about how I want them. I like to leave these a little bit long because these things move super well and it really makes a difference. The easy thing to do here is to put ostrich back and I, I do that for fishing flies a lot of the time I do that but I'm gonna try to make this one fancy. <clears throat> Strip off some of the, the barbs and the stem to give you a a neater tie-down point. I'm just going to 
time on in front. I should probably just just go with that, but I'm going to be greedy. Move it a little bit more to the side. And I'm going to spin it just a little bit. A little bit more. Now it's looking sort of... Okay, I'm going to go with that right there. That looks good. One more wrap. Really tight, and then I'm going to go to the other side, do the same thing. This one's got some natural curvature, so I'm putting it on the side where it makes sense. Come on, baby. Make my day. <clears throat> Try to get them as even as possible. Beautiful. That's perfect. Thank God. Just pulling real hard, and this is where using 140 to near thread makes a difference too. And I could pull this one a little bit if I wanted to. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. Am I? Yep. How does it look like that? No, I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with it. And cut these. I'd try to leave these stems a little bit long because the first thing your buddy's gonna do is say, oh, great fly, and pull on the hackles. And if he pulls the hackle off, he might not be your friend anymore. Or she. At least it wouldn't be mine. And we're gonna finish. Then I'll soak this whole head in head cement. But I'm going to let the water dry out first though. Right now it's all wet. Okay, so that's pretty much one of my favorite patterns. Uh, they're really fun to tie. Even more fun to fish, you know, with these with the OPST little micro commando heads on light rods and getting in high banks and swinging these things it just it just gives you a lot of confidence to know that you have a you know a proper intruder and it's for me it just kind of makes the whole <clears throat> the whole thing more enjoyable to fish a fly that you're really excited about so I hope you have fun experimenting with these things there's lots of cool materials to use and you know uh, check out sculpin wool pretty useful stuff.